What's up everyone, welcome back to the shop. I need some fall decor, which means we're gonna get out the scroll saw. I need two ultra thin wood panels. I need a background for the artwork and then I also need kind of a crappy looking panel that's gonna go on the back side of the project and you're never gonna see it. I like to keep my pieces a little bit thicker for glue up and then I'll make them thinner after the glue dries. Now ultimately, both these panels are gonna get glued onto a piece of MDF. I've got some thin pieces of poplar, I got some maple, and glue. So here's the plan. Gonna glue this beautiful maple together. Check this stuff out. It is super figured. Kind of hard to see on camera, but whenever I put finish on, it's gonna look awesome. Then the pop. So I'm gonna glue these together too. So I have two super thin panels and they will get sandwiched onto my MDF. If you've been here one side of a board, but not the other side, then you risk it bowing and really becoming a big potato chip. After my panels are dry, I sand them down super thin. I'm talking like less than an eighth of an inch thin. So I've got both of them here. I got the poplar one, I got the maple one. The poplar is gonna be for the back side of the artwork, so set off to the side. Don't need that right now. The maple though, that's gonna be the background and whew, that's gonna look really good. Now these are gonna get glued to a piece of MDF. I usually go thicker than this, but I wanna do an experiment. So I took a piece of MDF, I planed it down so it is a bit thinner. I don't want to go too thin though, because I do risk it cupping or something. So we're going to see how this one turns out. And I also have my artwork, which I uh, printed on a giant sheet of paper. I am lucky enough to have a printer that prints off this size. If not, I would have printed just regular sheets of paper and just taped them together. I've done it a million times. Now, tools of the trade to make this whole thing happen. For this project, I need an X-Acto knife and a ruler, contact paper, Regular clear packing tape. Three types of glue. We have regular wood glue, CA glue or super glue, some accelerator to help the super glue dry faster, and then some super 77 spray adhesive. Last but not least, I have a cardboard box. I plan to use two different types of blades. I got a number five reverse tooth blade and then a number two crown tooth blade. So unless something weird comes up, that's what I'm rolling with. First thing is I need to cut a silhouette for the artwork. So I'm gonna put some contact paper down on my maple panel, spray some spray adhesive on the back of my artwork, and then put it on the maple. I try my best to line up one of the edges with one of the edges of the panel. That's just gonna make things a little bit easier whenever I cut this down to its final size later on. And then good rule of thumb for me is to put packing tape over the entire thing. That helps it so that the paper doesn't fray up as I'm cutting. I start with the pilot hole so I can thread my blade through it. Then I'm gonna cut out the entire squirrel, but leave the background. This is a constant reminder to myself that I can cut through the squirrel because naturally I kind of want to leave them whole, but nope, I need to keep the background whole and just cut straight through the squirrel when need be. When I cut silhouettes, I keep all the inside pieces just in case I need them for reference. Now, while it is rare, every once in a while, a tiny little piece will break off. So I try to save everything, set those to the side and I can always glue them back later. Silhouette doesn't look too bad. Now it's time for kind of a complicated glue up. I have my panel, I've got the silhouette, I have my poplar panel, and then I also have a piece of veneer. This is Winge. This is what's gonna give the artwork a dark background. So what I'm gonna do is glue this up in two stages. I'm gonna put the poplar on one side, the Winge on the other, stick it in my veneer press, maybe half hour or so. Crank open that veneer press, glue on the silhouette on top of the Winge, crank it back down, let it sit uh, probably overnight, come back, and then I can start working on putting all the pieces together and making our angry squirrel. You ever do something and kind of wonder why you did it? Well, I had a kind of a setback with the glue up, but everything's an experiment. Okay, what I wasn't thinking about was that I decided to use a cold pressed veneer. So this is a veneer glue specifically made or veneering. The thing is, is it's super slow drying. I was thinking using a faster glue, like a regular glue. So whenever I said I was gonna glue my Winge all together, let it sit for a few minutes, take it out, and then put my silhouette on top. Well, that's fine if the glue would have dried. When you take something that has a big hole cut out and you put it on here and the bottom's not dry and you squeeze it down, what happens? Well, the Winge actually protruded up. What I ended up doing 
was trying to see if I could salvage it. So I took the whole panel out, planed it down, did a ton of sanding just to see if I could save the silhouette. And well, I think I can. So made a new panel. It's completely dry. I let it sit in the press overnight. I'm gonna glue this back on there. Now, if I couldn't, I just recut it out. Not the end of the world, but kind of want to make sure that I use this, you know, just out of spite of, you know, myself. Well, that sort of looks better, huh? Compared to the original. All right, so now I'm ready to rock and roll as far as all my cuts go. I've been giving it a lot of thought. Figure out what colors do I need to use? So when I'm looking at Angry Squirrel here, there's really only a couple colors, right? You've got this brownish, orangish color, and then more of a light, like beige color. Figure for the brown, orange color. So what I ended up finding was a piece of Chechen. I think it is the exact color that I need. I'm gonna try this out. I've, I've used it before, but not in scroll sawing. I'm gonna go through all the normal steps I would take for something like this. I'm gonna take an X-Acto knife and cut out the part of the picture that I want. And I'm gonna take some contact paper and apply it to my workpiece. I'll take the tail, spray it with some Super 77 spray adhesive, apply it onto my workpiece. And then I'm gonna cover the whole thing with packing tape. Every piece is gonna be cut out twice. I'm gonna cut the outside shape and then I'm gonna go back and cut it a little bit smaller. So the first cut's gonna be on the outside of the black line and then the second cut is gonna be on the inside of the black line. The whole point in that is I can keep that shadow line from that image. I'm gonna set that off to the side. I'm definitely gonna use that later on and it's gonna help you to make sure all my pieces are where they're supposed to be at. Otherwise, who knows what this is actually gonna look like. You can't leave it up to me. He's gonna have eyeballs on his tail if it's up to me. That is one thing I really dig about this picture is those thick black shadow lines. That's all gonna be negative space. I think that's really cool stuff. And that's why you see it in so much of the artwork that I make. I got the tail cut out and I also have that shadow line too. So I save that. I'm gonna put that up against, pressed up against the maple. And then I'll take the tail and I can set that in place and make sure everything fits right before I glue it. Now, as far as glue goes for a piece this big, I think I'm gonna use a combination of wood glue and super glue. So I'm gonna put a little bit of wood glue on there. That's gonna give a lot of strength. And then I'm gonna mix in some CA glue, some super glue, so that it dries really quick, holds it in place, so I don't have to end up clamping anything. I gotta be careful though, I don't wanna have any sort of squeeze out because we're gonna put a lighter piece close to it. I don't wanna have any squeeze out that's gonna interfere with gluing that lighter piece in the place. Okay, so now I got a choice. Do I keep going with the Chechen and that orange color or do I keep working on the tail? I think I'm gonna work on the tail. Now that beige color, um, we got a lot of choices, right? I mean, maple, whatever. Uh, so I just grabbed a bunch of random pieces here to see what I like. I've got some white oak, but you know what really jumped out at me? was maybe sycamore. I don't know, there's just something about this light color sycamore that just feels woodsy. I know that seems kind of weird because it's all wood, right? I don't know, just something about it though. It's interesting working with these two very different species of wood. Chechen is dense, it's oily, it gums up blades, but it's beautiful, so it's worth it. And then you have the sycamore, which in comparison is kind of like cutting a marshmallow. It just feels that soft in comparison to the Chechen. Again, though, a beautiful wood. So because they're so different, it might take me a second or two to kind of get the flow, get the feel for how I want to cut that, but it, it comes natural. You'll start to feel it out if you're working with various species like I am. In the case of this part of the tail, I have two shadow lines to keep. I need to keep the thick one that's on the bottom, and I also need to have that one that divides the orange part of the tail and the beige lighter part of the tail. I did not keep that when I cut the first part of the tail. And I keep saying tail a lot, tail, 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 but you know, that is a big part of this picture. After the tail, I could jump to the right side of the body, which is a large piece. It runs from the back leg all the way up to his hand towards the top of the artwork. Since this piece hugs so much of the edge of my silhouette, I wanna be extra careful about keeping the black shadow lines and whole pieces. I don't want a bunch of tiny pieces that I have to worry about trying to align. Getting the body perfectly in place means all the other pieces from this point forward will likely go in the correct spot, like the belly. I can cut that out of a piece of sycamore, glue it down using the right side of the body as reference. So basically it's piece, then add a shadow line, then another piece, then a shadow line, and another piece, and just keep on going through the artwork. I'll move from the belly down to that front leg. Now this one really isn't too bad. It's only two pieces. You got the whole leg and the foot, and then that little bitty middle toe. 
All right, the part that I've been waiting for, the face, because, well, the face really makes this whole character, right? It's all the expression. That's what I like about it. That's the reason why I picked it. So when I look at that face, I see uh, three different colors of wood, maybe four different thicknesses to pull this one off. I found some off cuts of different species I can use for the face. The good thing about cutting a lot of scroll saw stuff is you get little pieces that you cut. So then you have all these extra pieces you can saw off the side. You can always use them later. So I've got a piece of Chechen. This is what I use for the body. And I found a piece of sycamore. Now this one's a bit thicker than the other sycamore I used. When I put it next to it, I see that uh, it's, it's quite a bit uh, thicker than the Chechen. That's perfect because I'm gonna use that for the nose. It's more pronounced from the rest of his body. I also found two pieces of holly. Holly's awesome because it is super white. It's gonna be great for those teeth and for the eyes. Now, whenever I put those up to my sycamore and up to my Chechen, what I see is that one of them is thinner than the Chechen, one of them's thicker, but either way, they're both thinner than the sycamore. These will be perfect for his teeth because you got the teeth on the inside of the mouth. So that means that those can be thinner than the Chechen. Then you got the buck teeth on the outside so I can use the thicker piece for those. When it comes to his eyes, I think I'll use the thicker piece of holly. That way it sticks off of his face a lot and it'll be a little bit more expressive. I think I'll start with the chin first, get that in place and then maybe uh, work to the nose and then down to the teeth. I don't know, I'm gonna make it up. I guess with the face, I'm sort of cutting out everything three times. I cut the entire head out of Chechen just to make sure that it fits into the space in my panel. Then I cut out each feature like the snout from the Chechen, but leave the black lines intact if possible. I cut the snout out of Sycamore because that's the wood species I really want for this and then glue it in place using the Chechen as the reference. And then I did the same thing for the teeth and the eyes. Though the teeth did take a long time because you know, it's all individual teeth. So when you add it all up, I end up cutting the Chechen outside the lines, then cutting the actual replacement piece from the different wood, then coming back and then cutting the Chechen again inside the lines. I can get that glued into place and now I have a head. Last minute addition, I did decide to add a little piece of Catalox for his actual nose on the middle of that snout. It just felt like something needed to be there. I must say, that is one good looking squirrel. So now we're towards the end and that is doing the acorn, the prize that the squirrel needs, right? Well, I'm thinking for the acorn, two woods. I got white oak and I got walnut. The reason why I'm thinking oak is because it has that natural texture that I think would look cool for an acorn. Now the walnut itself though, that is much thicker than the oak. So that means it's gonna be really good for the cap of the acorn. So put them together, we have the perfect acorn for this crazy squirrel. I did decide to add another wood species for the acorn. I was gonna have a bunch of negative space, but then I thought maybe that's not the right look for it. So what I did was add that catalox, also like I did for the nose, into the acorn cap as a transition. So it goes from the oak to a thicker catalox and then to an even thicker walnut. Unfortunately, the walnut is a whole bunch of tiny little pieces that have to fit together. So that's gonna take a bit. After I got the last pieces in place, I took some time, sanded the entire project, and then made sure I didn't have any glue squeeze out in between the pieces. Once everything looked good, I sprayed the project with some satin lacquer from a spray can. How cool is that? All I have to do is throw it into a frame if I feel like it. Now, I did make it look a little bit complicated by doing this whole crazy glue up for the panel, but it doesn't really have to be that way. You could take all these pieces and just glue them onto a regular board and get the same effect. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel. Until we meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.